What terrifying confession has someone told you while drunk? A coworker told me she went all angel of mercy and smothered her elderly, dementia-ridden grandmother while she was sleeping. The next Monday in the office was definitely a weird one after that particular happy hour confession. My granny always tells us to push her out onto an ice floe when she can't think for herself anymore, which is slightly disturbing but fine, until she semi-ironically talks about going into her friend's dementia home and machine gunning all the old people. I worked in a hospital and an alcoholic guy I knew from around my town came in. Of course he was very drunk, so he got a bed, he was homeless at this point. Just as he was starting to settle he screamed I slit his fucking throat. So I went up to him and asked him to settle and he started telling me that he did it while in the army and could never forgive himself for it. Cried himself to sleep and died in the local park a few months later. It was me who did the confessing. When I was 18 I was sexually assaulted on a bridge in the middle of the night when I was all alone. My mum works in hearing and she had always told me to bite someone if I got into trouble. So I did, I bit into his neck until my teeth met again. He fell down then I ran all the way home. A few weeks later I read in the news that a serial assaulter had gone to the hospital with neck wounds and later died. They'd drawn it down to him attacking someone and them acting in self defense. I never told anyone until I got really drunk with my boyfriend last year and spilled it. He couldn't believe I'd kept that secret. Absolutely self defense on your part. And that guy never assaulted anyone else again. Once at a college party, this big guy got upset, picked up the table, and threw it across the room, shouting my uncle molested me everyone was terrified, but we all felt really bad for the guy. Damn. Fingers crossed somebody there helped him into therapy. That statement will stop a party dead in its tracks, and honestly for his sake it's good that it did. Yeah it was heartbreaking when he started to break down and cry after realizing what had just happened needless to say, the party was over. I have a friend whose grandmother married her late husband's friend. One day while drunk he confessed to killing her first husband. She packed up the kids and left. Did she report him? Did he kill the first husband to get her for himself? Or did he marry her out of guilt? I have questions. I think the second killed the first to get with his wife. I just asked my buddy if she ever went to the police. Had a buddy tell me his friend drunkenly confessed to him that he had killed his stepdad and made it look like a suicide. His stepdad had been abusive towards him and his mom for years and it finally broke when he made it look like his stepfather had hung himself in their garage. I don't know who the friend was, I was never given a name or much else of the story. Haha, <laughs> I put Adderall in your beer. We are gonna party till the sun comes up bro. Spiking people's drinks is so scummy. Is there any more to this story? At one point he whipped out a knife and put a hole in the surprisingly thin bathroom wall of the dive bar. Shit had carved his name above it. I had a massive mood swing and got in a really nasty parking lot fight. I woke up with dried blood on my knuckles heart beating out of my chest, and paralyzing anxiety. The guy was like the Kenny Bania of our friend group. Always spastic and obnoxious, and taking things past the point of being entertaining. No one ever wanted to hang out with him one on one. I thought I was being a good guy by giving him a shot. This effectively got him ostracized from our friend group. Went on a work do, and my co-worker, a major stone-faced bland woman, got pretty drunk. Ended up telling me she discovered her dad's body when he hung himself. Needless to say I realized why she was the way she was after that. If my ex was still in love with me, I wouldn't be married to you. Oh my god. I still think about it, I don't think I'll ever forget it, it keeps me up at night sometimes. I had a male friend tell me he had raped me once when I was passed out drunk, I'm a straight male and had been friends with this guy for 15 years and had been drunk with him Alet. Since then I have found out a lot of messed up stuff about him. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Growing up gay in a small town, I was the only gay person I knew for most of my life up until adulthood. 
I get sick with guilt when I read stories like yours because of how inappropriate and pushy I was with a straight friend when I was a teenager, but I never would have assaulted him like that or touched him period without his consent. It's just that he was kind of all I had. It's hard to accept no gracefully when you're young and lonely. Maybe I'm just rationalizing what a dick I was. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm making what happened to you about me somehow. I hope you're okay. Life is just so goddamn fucked up sometimes. Thank you, I'm doing great, and I've dealt with it. I have no bad feelings toward anyone, and I've learned to understand people, and why they do what they do. I have never let this affect my love and support for the LGBT community. My sister's boyfriend at the time told me he thought he might have fallen for the wrong sister. Doesn't compare to most of these, but my sister is my best friend, and I was so scared he might ruin that. Edit, since a lot of people have asked, no, I never told my sister about it. Another edit, they broke up very shortly after this, because he wasn't trustworthy in other ways, he stole some money, she kicked him to the curb. A friend of mine died from a drug overdose. After the funeral a mutual friend of ours, and I were getting drunk, when he broke down crying. He asked me if I remembered the time when he and our dead friend told me about an accident that they'd witnessed where they saw a truck driver die. I told him I did. He then told me the most fucked up shit. He said that our friend ran up to the dying man and stole his wedding ring and that the man couldn't do anything but look up, terrified, at our friend as he was being robbed. I knew they were bad into drugs, but I never thought they could do anything like that. I grew up with them. They were like my brothers. I don't really trust anyone completely anymore. No drugs or alcohol involved, but I have somewhat of a similar story. A few years ago, my mom witnessed an accident. A lady was texting, blew through a red light, and t-boned a truck with an elderly man driving. My mom jumped out of her car and held on to him while waiting for an ambulance. The girl who hit him, early 20s, was freaking out and called her mom. The mom showed up first, and kept telling my mom just tell the cops he ran the red light, no one will know, and he died. My mom heard his last words, sounds, really, that she repeated for weeks. My mom cried for days. She met the family, and it was the man and his wife's anniversary, or something like that. We obviously told the cops the truth, but we don't know any of the follow up. His obituary is framed on our wall. I hate to think the last thing he heard was just tell the cops this was his fault. My mom was in another state for business, a company flew her crew out to Texas to discuss a change in software and offered their company and so it was just my dad taking care of me. I was about 10 and he came to tuck me in one night but he has incredibly hammered. He opened the door to my bedroom, told me I was a mistake that saved them from getting divorce and goodnight. Worst part is he didn't close the door completely when he left. Last part hit close to home, have some respect shut the goddamn door Jesus Christ. I heard my mom tell her friend I was a mistake and the reason her and my dad divorced. That's why you don't eavesdrop. After my mom died I was going through her email. We never had a good relationship, pretty much ever. Anyways I went in her mail and just did a search for my name found a part where she told my aunt how much she didn't like me and wishes I would just go away. It wasn't the least bit surprising, and I've said the same thing about her, but it still stung a bit. The thing we always fought about was her drinking. She was a chronic abusive alcoholic. My ex told me that he had been molested by his sister between the ages of 6 to 11. She was 9 to 14. His dad walked in once and didn't do anything. His own family knew that he was being sexually abused for years and did absolutely nothing to protect him. Night before his wedding day, I'm still in love with C underscore, but I'm still gonna marry F underscore tomorrow because it's too late now. Let's wait until we have children and a house to fuck up F's life. At a family gathering my grandma got tipsy and started to tell stories from her childhood. While she does this every time, no matter tipsy or sober, guess it's just a normal grandma thing, this time it took a dark turn. 
she told us a story, that is the reason she hates to go to the dentist, and particularly hates the drilling part. She told us a story about when she was 6 years old. During WW2 my family lived in Hamburg, Germany right next to the harbor. During a particular week in 1943 the city was continuously bombed, and over 35.000 people died, and more than a 100.000 people were injured. The houses that were hit, mostly burned down creating a huge fire, with such force, that I sucked not only oxygen in, creating strong winds, but also people. The fire created such heat, that people running out of their burning houses got stuck in the molten asphalt on the streets, and burned to death. As it was all happening around her, that particular smell was present for over a week in her part of the city. Drilling in your tooth, creates exactly that smell. My grandma had to stop the dentist, as she recognized the smell immediately. This story shook us to the core, as it came out of the blue. It still sends chills down my spine. For anybody who wants to read more about it. Operation Gamorha, n.m.wikipedia.org link. Edit, r slash world weary eye stories, if anyone wants to share their parents slash grandparents story. My story can't compare with yours in significance, and it has nothing to do with drinking. But, my mother always hated driving over a particular bridge, one that had a metal mesh as a roadbed. The sound the tires make is very particular. We used to tease her about it for years. One day she had enough, and told us why. When she was a wave in WWII, she went out to party with some sailors. One of them had a car with running boards, and one more sailor wanted to come along, one the other guys didn't like. They told him to ride on the running board and hang on. When they went over a bridge with a similar roadbed, they hit the gas, and the extra sailor fell off, and was run over. She was still carrying the guilt 40 years later. When I was 14 my mom took me, and my sisters and a couple of our friends to the beach. My sister, 15, and I got our own room with our two friends and wound up meeting some boys and getting drunk. My sister's friend, 15F, was really drunk, and got super upset, and confessed that her stepfather had been sexually molesting her, raping her, for years. Really 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 horrible stuff. It sobered everyone up fast. We rallied around her, told her we were there for her, yada yada, but when we got home from the beach trip a few days later I knew I needed to tell my mom. After I told my mom she got the state police involved, there was a trial, and the man wound up sentenced to 8 years in prison. It turned out he was doing it to the younger sister as well. There are so many terrible people out there, I'm really glad that at such a young age all of you handled it so well, and helped her out. I'm sure she really appreciated it. We are still friends, and she is a happy well adjusted 37 year old woman with 2 kids now. Actually, she's way better than that, she has a heart of gold. I own a photography business and her husband happens to have this vintage truck that he adores, and she sweet talked him into letting me borrow it for a day of Christmas mini sessions. I should go shoot her a message, and remind her how awesome she is. After a work party the wife of a colleague and me ended up being the last two people standing. We were both fairly drunk, when she started telling me about how she was raped by a priest, when she was a kid. The church covered it all up, and the bastard never faced any charges. She told me she poisoned her abusive ex. A coworker was pretty inebriated, when he told me, that he hates his life, he hates his partner, and the only reason he's still married to her is, because he loves his daughter, and doesn't want to lose her. One of my best friends, since middle school opened up to me the day we had our last day of high school. We had been partying all day, got off at 10am, but most people left at around 3pm, to go get ready for the seniors dinner, and after party and whatnot. My friend stayed behind with our class president. I told him I'd pick him up for the dinner and left. When I got back, both were falling down drunk and in tears. A few years earlier, our class priest had lost his father. I take my buddy back to his house, so he can get changed for the dinner, and on the way he tells me what happened. They had kept drinking when everyone left, and eventually got to the topic of their dads. I had never met my friend's dad, he died and that was all I knew. 
I never knew how he died. It turns out my buddy's dad was a lawyer or something in the country he's from, and was being extorted by a gang. When money started to run out, my buddy's dad sent the family to another country, and told them he'd meet them there, that he had to finish some things up. A few weeks after moving they learned that he had been murdered by the gang. It completely fucked my friend up. We always used to drink heavily, and whatever since we were in high school. For me it was just drinking, for my buddy it was numbing the pain. It was fucking shocking when he told me this and really made me understand him a lot more why he acted how he acted. I have too. I had a housemate in college who several years prior had accidentally shot and killed a friend of his in a hunting accident. He went to trial and was acquitted of all charges. Years later, he didn't tell me, but he told a woman I was intimate with that it wasn't an accident. Years ago, when I worked at the Las Vegas Hilton, in the main kitchen. I had a very high strung boss named Hussein. He was from Turkey. We jokingly referred to him as insane because of his personality. Once, after our shift was over, he grabbed a case of beer from the supply walk-in refrigerator and invited a few of us to help ourselves. He probably had 4 or 5 himself. He then proceeded to tell us that when he lived in Turkey, he had kicked some guy's ass and came to the US to get away. My co-workers and I really didn't give it too much thought. About a month later, we came to find out that, while on vacation in Mexico, Hussein had been walking back to his hotel room after drinking at a bar. He had ducked down an alley to take a piss and was caught by a policeman. He was charged and convicted of public urination. At least at the time, the US didn't have reciprocity with Turkey, but Mexico did. Well, it turns out that what Hussein had described as kicking someone's ass turned out to be murder. He was taken back to Turkey, where we assume that he spent the rest of his life in a Turkish prison. The movie The Midnight Express portrays what life is like there. My friend's husband told me he was hiding liquor from his wife, my friend. Which was weird, because they both drink and it's not a big deal. I told my friend what he said, she confronted him and all of his lies started pouring out. Cheating on her with multiple women, lying about his income, taking cc's out in her name, racking up tens of thousands of dollars on them, stealing from their kids college funds. They are now divorced. That weird little lie he told me, while drunk is what started it all. My old pastor told me he was gay, and found women repulsive he had a wife and a baby on the way this was in a small very religious town where fear about the homosexuals were rampant. Shared an off campus apartment with a very cool older guy in college. He was a nurse. Got up super early every morning to do his shifts. Every night you could find him at his regular Irish pub. They let me drink there without ID, because they knew I was with him. Basically a super high functioning alcoholic. One day I came home, after finishing my exams. He brings out a bottle of Jameson to celebrate. It was about two thirds full. After a few shots he starts telling me about his time in Vietnam. I'd known him for two years, and he had never brought it up, and I had never asked. I knew he was a vet, but assumed he had been a nurse. Nope. Special forces, I'm not military, and I'm sure I got some of the actual military stuff wrong, as you shall come to understand. His demeanor totally changed after a few drinks. He started telling me about having to go on covert operations to carry out assassinations of civilians. Said he dreams of the faces of all the people he killed. We ended up polishing off the entire bottle. He got up the next morning at 5am and went off to work. I spent the entire day moaning in bed and praying to the porcelain god. We never spoke about it again. An ex-friend, not because of this, but other circumstances, basically suggested he had sex with his uncle just to piss off his aunt, mom's sister, and that he was saving it for when they had a big fight. Later he denied saying anything like that, of course, but a while later we heard there was indeed problems within his family and they ended up moving from town. That was when I was like 16 to 17 yo. When he was 11, my dad was abducted and raped by 3 men. He was so terrified, that he never told his parents, 
After my grandpa passed away, my dad finally told my grandma what happened. She told him that they already knew. One of my dad's siblings knew and had told grandpa. She just said that he had taken care of it. A few years later, a developer bought my grandparents farm and turned it into a development. During excavation they found three male skeletons buried in a single grave. I guess grandpa really did take care of it. Rangers really do lead the way. I had someone tell me that he molested his daughter when she was an infant because he was angry and thought that his girlfriend had cheated on him and that she wasn't his biological daughter. He went on to say DNA testing was done and it was determined that she was actually his daughter and that he felt very guilty about the whole thing. His daughter was 7 to 8 at the time he told me this. I literally spent a night tossing and turning thinking about it and finally decided I had to report him. UMM that's a really odd reason to molest someone. Let alone a child. He probably told himself that's why he did it to make himself feel better or something. People are sick. I'm glad you reported it. You're right. He was always a pedophile in my opinion. Hell, I've been angry at people in traffic, but I don't pull over and molest them. My mother's first husband, the sperm donor. I was 16. She had just walked out that same day, and he got extremely drunk, and told me that I was never supposed to have been born, and that I should have died with my brother. I asked him what he meant by my brother, since I had no siblings and he confessed to beating the shit out of my mother when she was pregnant and she ended up in the hospital. I was born, but my twin brother died in the womb. At the time my mother's English, she's Polish, was not good, so he claimed to doctors that she just fell down the stairs and threatened to have her deported and used me as blackmail if she ever told anyone. I followed her soon after once she had contacted me that she'd found a place to stay. I asked her if she had anything to tell me regarding my birth and she told me the same story. I guess that explains why I felt like I was missing a part of myself all my life. I had a boyfriend who never talked about his past ever. He talked so fondly of his old state but just about the actual state never about people. If you treat a prod further he would just say oh well it doesn't matter anymore. We were young, I was about 19, and he was probably like 23 or so. He drank a shit ton all the time, and whatever we were young, so I just thought that it was normal and all in good fun. One night while shit faced he started talking about how much he loved going into the woods, and how he and his friends enjoyed playing on the rivers and streams in his old state. Then he got very sad, and started to babble a bit incoherently. I heard him say something along the lines of his friend came to his house on meth, and they were all also on drugs. Then more incoherently babble then something about his friend getting shot in the face. Then more incoherent babbling then something about that is why he can never go home again. He was so desperately sad, and missed his home very much. You could tell every time the topic came up. So yeah I'm pretty sure he accidentally, or on purpose, killed a guy, and was on the run. I have dot my link, money on accident, because he seemed so distraught boohoo you never know. Also, you barely know anyone or anything at 19 years old. I often wonder if he ever had to face those demons. Someone said about having my bank details and reading them out to me, they were correct too which was enough for me to do a lot to secure it. My cousin and I found out we were molested by the same uncle. A funny old drunk in my town used to come in and chat with me at the ice cream parlor I worked at. He was a very kind old man who liked to joke around and he was always very appropriate to me and the other teens who worked there, just lonely I guess. One day I was asking him if he was ever married and he got tears in his eyes and said I lost her, she died with the baby and that's when everything went bad and then left. Me and the other girl working just sobbed, it was so sad. A friend of mine told me once we were out of college about his hazing back in freshman year of high school for wrestling. That was some repressed barbaric homosexual stuff. He started tearing up, it was bad. You hear about some of this hazing stuff, but there's plenty of times you don't hear about it and it goes unreported. What happened to him? 
stripped him. Stuck things in his butt. I see hot on his member. Locked him outside naked. I forgot the whole list. My mother once told me a story while drunk. She had a pregnancy before me, but her boyfriend wasn't ready for a kid, so he kicked her in the stomach until she was no longer pregnant. So for revenge she had her friend who was a prostitute seduce him, take him to a hotel room, and tied him up. My mom then described how she took a baseball bat and broke every bone she could of his, described how she had to throw water on him to keep him awake. She was never tried for it, so I'm assuming he lived. I had heard the kicked in the stomach till miscarriage part before, the whole bat thing was a new detail, she hasn't mentioned it since. Guy I worked with was hanging out with me and my friends. My friends left, and I was alone with co-worker. He didn't seem that drunk, but later claimed he was. He told me all about the fantasies he had about raping and torturing me. Yup I left pretty promptly. Smart move. I don't know how true it is, but there is a saying a drunk mind speaks a sober heart. A girl told me she wanted to die, while crying, and that has been like this for several years. Not big compared to other story, but still hit you when someone say that. A guy in a pub told me through tears, that two guys took him at Niffer Point and bound to a warehouse in the middle of nowhere, raped, harmed and kept him captive for days. He got free whilst they were sleeping, stabbed them both to death, and left them there. Whether he was actually telling the truth or not I will never know. He seemed very deeply traumatized by the experience, and seemed to if nothing else believe what he was telling me. It was in the days, when I didn't have internet access, so I wasn't able to look for clues about it. This will most likely get lost, but here it goes. When I moved to the current city I live in I found a room at on Craigslist, it was 2011 so not as weird as it would be today, and he was really cool. He lived in a double master house, so I had a lot of privacy, he was a young real estate agent, and we ended up hanging out in each other's social circles. Well, we'll call him M. Ended up catching feelings for this girl, that became pretty close to me. When the feelings weren't reciprocated he started getting weird and almost resentful towards me but I digress. Over time I found out that him had a drinking problem. I would get home from work around 1am, and it wasn't uncommon he would be passed out on the couch, after finishing off one of those cheap ass liter bottles of wine. One night I'd get home a little early, and I notice him sitting with his back against the couch in the total dark. I ask him if he's okay, in which I can immediately tell he's emotionally distressed. With the drunk wine next to him, he begins telling me that when he first moved to the city he caught his girlfriend in bed with another guy and shot and killed him. His girlfriend fled the state, and because it was in a shifty part of town police never paid it much attention, so he got away with it, and he thinks about it all the time. I gracefully made my exit upstairs freaking tf out. When I saw him the next morning he asked me what time I got home from work, because he didn't hear me come in meaning he has no recollection of telling me he murdered someone. I had my dad help move me out the next week and I never mentioned it to him. My awesome boss at the time, who didn't say much about his life, confessed to me that his marriage wasn't something he wanted and that he's only staying in it for the love of his two young daughters. It was heartbreaking. My grandfather grew up in the sticks of Texas. One time he casually brought up that I shouldn't ever wear pants with cotton lining them. Apparently his best friend burned alive in front of him because his pants caught fire and they couldn't get it out or the pants off in time. Never mentioned anything about it before or after. In college, I was getting drunk with a couple friends. One admitted that she gave her brother a blowjob. Her brother had caught her watching lesbian born, and threatened to tell their parents if she didn't suck his dick. My other friend and I were horrified and asked her why she didn't just tell her parents first about her brother blackmailing her, and that the claim she was watching lesbian porn was a lie. She paused for a secretary and said she didn't think of that. What? The? Fuck. I'm not in the popular mom group but somehow got invited to one of their parties, because one of my kids was friends with some of their kids. One of the moms who clearly had had a lot to drink came up to me and calmly told me that if she were to die or go missing, 
that I had to make sure to go to the police and tell them her husband did it. She then told me I was the only one she could trust, squeezed my hands, and walked away. She is still alive, but left the husband about a year later. I was having dinner with a group of friends, and one girl was talking about how at a party she helped a drunk guy friend get onto a bed, and then she got him naked, and started riding him. She said he woke up halfway through but was receptive, was very happy and completely okay with it, because he found her hot, and after they were done he joked to her, that he would have punched her face in, and called the cops, if he didn't find her attractive. I honestly wasn't sure how I was supposed to react to that story, because what she did was technically rape, but then if her victim genuinely didn't mind, then, yeah I don't know. Granted she was talking to a group of friends including me, so I didn't really have to give her a reaction. Still fucked up. Thanks for watching. Do you have something to share? Leave it in the comments. Please like and subscribe for more edit readings. Links mentioned in this video can be found in the description. Have a great day.